Hi, everyone. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sorry, we got we got a lot of people in this room. Oh. Right. Um, so it's actually me. Um, uh, Ross, just how about a week ago or a few days ago, at least you were talking about how a lot of the prices were, were pretty steep high going into this year's deadline. How did they lower it all? How, how did that come into today in terms of, of what it was a few days ago? Yeah, I'm, you know, every year, I think it, uh, whether it's a deadline or free agency, um, you know, everything's a bit relative and it's about finding opportunities that fit either in free agency, if you're looking to acquire a free agent, obviously, or in a trade, um, you know, finding what works for two organizations. So fortunately, we were able to do that on several fronts, and we're exceptionally excited about the group that we've added to this exciting young core that we have so much confidence in and to add a group to that uh, team that you know can be a part of this for some time each of the individuals could be here for extended periods of time and we've seen huge benefits in that the continuity of uh, these guys being together and caring about one another and it being special uh, is important to us and we've seen power in that so exceptionally excited that we are we're able to line up uh, with the acquisitions that we made Ross how does Whit Merrifield fit into your roster and what information do you have on his vaccination status and ability to enter Canada? Yeah. So, I mean, he's such a good player first and foremost, and he is, uh, you know, very accomplished with incredible experiences, the versatility, the contact ability, the speed, playing multiple positions, incredible base runner, feel very good about him at so many different positions that that versatility will help us. Uh, down the stretch. And he could, um, you know, between he and Kevin and Rymel um, and, and others, we, we feel like we can really protect and keep guys from time to time off their feet in the event of the injury. We're, we're very well covered. Um, you know, but wit is a, you know, we see as someone as an everyday player and hopefully uh, we'll be able to balance that. Well, I know John Schneider and his staff will work hard to balance that well for everyone. Um, and on the vaccination status, he was acquired right at the deadline. So that this is a very fresh um, acquisition. And so because of that, I'm not going to comment more um, on that process for him and, and let him work through that with his family. So the expectation, Ross, is that as things stand right now, he won't be available to you uh, for the homestand when you return from this road trip? Again, I'm, I'm not going to comment further on that out of respect for him. I, we, we have said hello to one another, and I just want to be respectful of that. Um, Ross, I just wondered, um, how did the status of George's um, elbow play into the acquisition for Whit Berryfield? You mentioned his versatility, and I assume you think he can play center field. Yeah, I mean, not really. I mean, really, it, the opportunity to acquire Whit was very exciting for us. But I think the versatility uh, protects us in many ways, but George's status was not uh, weighing heavily into that. Hey, Ross, um, obviously you made some ads to the bullpen. Do you feel that, uh, how would you describe the sort of the, the overall build of the bullpen now with the, with the two? Yeah, it's, it's so, that it's, it's very exciting for us to think about adding to Jordan Romano, congratulations to Jordan on winning reliever of the month, a uh, bullpen that over the last stretch has been very effective for us. And, and thinking about building out you know, on Tim Meza and Simmer and Yemi Garcia and David Phelps and how well that they've performed and co now complimenting them with, and Trevor Richards and now complimenting them with uh, Zach Pop, uh, Mitch White will be a part of that in some way, somehow, and Anthony Bass as well. That is, uh, that's exciting. So, you know, Zach has a power sinker and a, a very good slider that we think will, will complement that pen well. And Anthony Bass, his slider has been exceptionally effective in a tough division in the NL East and really excited about those two pieces coming into the fold. And Mitch White complements our rotation and the bullpen. And it was a pretty crazy afternoon all around Major League Be Baseball. Were you, were you involved or, or close in any other big, big deals as, as the deadline approached? Yeah, I mean, nothing. nothing's done until it's done. And you define close. <laughs> you know, it's so difficult to do. So we obviously, over the course of the last month, 
we're in many discussions on several with several or several different organizations and many different players. Um, and, you know, we're, we're really, it's not that productive to talk about uh, how close we were on player a from certain organizations and really would rather focus on the players that we were able to acquire that we are so excited about. Thanks Ross. Uh, right. Ross kind of following up on, on Rob there. I mean, it was sure, it's always been a pretty active deadline. The, the Yankees and, and twins and Astros are among the teams who, who, have, who have made some noise. Um, how confident are you that you guys have done enough to not only kind of hang with those guys, but maybe surpass them? I, I, we are so excited about this team and the acquisitions. And I think the, the continuity aspect of it, being able to think about complementing this core, the work we've done on the teammates and the character, uh, the, the present value and the future value of, of each of these individuals is really exciting for us. Plus, so one more for me. Is, is it fair to characterize Mitch White as potentially being able to fit into that Ross Stripling type of role where he goes to the bullpen, can be pulled out to start as needed, or do you see him more in one area than, than the other? Well, he, he's certainly done that, and I think that's a fair assessment to think of someone filling that role. You see it more and more in the game today, and uh, it really comes down to the ability to start that is so attractive. Someone that can go five or six innings, throw 100 pitches, has the ability to get right-handers and left-handers out. Um, you know, obviously has the arsenal to do that and the athleticism to hold up and the durability are all things that aren't easy to acquire. Thanks. All right, Shai. Thanks, Caitlin. Craig. Great. We'll go over to Mitch then for a bit. And, and if you have more questions in that group there in Tampa, just raise your hands again. We'll be fine. Okay, go ahead. Sure, Ross, you mentioned continuity a couple times there. I think every single player you got today has multiple years of control. Was that uh, something you went into today trying to do, or is that more uh, speak about the rental market? Well, we, I think it starts with the players that we were so excited about their ability, their t the teammate in each of them. You know, we, we knew these guys really well. Um, you know, historically some more on a personal level, level than others, but just from scouting them over time and as much as you can learn, um, you know, from uh, your research and, and learning secondhand for, from a lot of it. But most importantly, we're excited about their impact, their potential impact and the present and the future. But we've seen the power of keeping this young core that we're so excited about that's already here together and then growing together. So it is attractive to us to think about adding to that young core in a way that is sustainable. Or what you've seen from recently impacted kind of how you viewed starting pitching as a need today. I couldn't hear the first part of your question, Mitch. I was just wondering if you say his most recent start, Kikuchi's, or what you've seen from him recently impacted how you went about adding starting pitching today. Well, certainly was encouraged by his last outing and much of his year. So, you know, I, I think to say that, um, you know, all of it has some impact on how we make decisions. And again, I'm exceptionally excited about Mitch White. feel like he's a really good complement to that group. Um, you know, Ross Tripling has had, you know, a really, really solid year for us and feel like we're in a good position to, uh, you know, feel like we made a, a very good team better today. Thanks, Ross. All right, Mitch. Okay, we'll go to Ben. Thanks, Ross. Hey, Ross. Uh, thanks for the time. Um, I'm wondering, so defensively, as you guys scouted uh, Whit Merrifield and, and got a feel for what he's able to do, what do you see as his best defensive positions? You really would the, the, the best thing about his defense is his versatility. And that's not taking anything away from his ability at all of the infield positions, mostly second and short would feel fine with him going to third, feel good about him in all three outfield positions, but it's working with him and putting him in the best position to be successful. So that involves preparation that involves reps that involves where he's been most recently uh, and that that's the thing about his athleticism and experiences is that could change year to year. Uh, but, you know, I think if as long as we're thinking ahead and putting him in positions to be successful and comfortable, that versatility is going to be powerful for us. OK, so he's a he's a legit candidate, as you guys see it, then to play center field, shortstop, second base. Yes. Um, 
And then I guess like broadly, uh, it was a busy deadline around baseball. And I'm just curious if you liked having the August deadline as a GM, if you liked having that kind of, I don't know if you call it like an escape hatch or, or what, to, to have that second chance at things, or, or do you just kind of like having, all right, this is it, it's, it's over now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough thing to, yeah, th- there are pros and cons to, to, to both. And I feel like this system as it is, um, it being so defined, is it does create a lot of uh, energy and excitement around the game, and that's good for baseball. Okay, thanks for that, Ben. Uh, back to Caitlin's laptop. Again, Neander is available in the back of the press box. Today's first pitch. <laughs> Can you hear us? Tell Eric. Tell yeah, Eric ahead, I said go hello. I got a question for Eric Neander. Temperature is 72 degrees. Outside temperature is 91. Um, just wondering, um, Ross, about, I guess, the talent going out of your organization. Um, it's obviously been a couple of years now where you've traded from your farm system. Where do you feel like you, you your farm system still is? Um, and, and you know, how, how tough is it to, again, part with another first rounder in Jordan? Yeah, I, you know, Jordan Groshans and, you know, obviously Nick Frasso and Castillo, that, that they're all very talented players and, and hard to part with. Also very excited about the players that are still here. Um, we had so much discussion and dialogue because of the interest in our farm system and feel like it's in still in solid shape. Um, excited about this year's draft. Uh, obviously excited about the players that are still here, but never easy to part ways uh, with players and especially first rounders. Uh, but you know, consolidating a lot of our talent closer to the major league team and uh, shifting some of it from positional fits to pitching and vice versa uh, worked out for us in a way where, um, again, we're, we're so excited about this group that we've added to an already young and very exciting team. With um, Anthony Bass in particular, obviously he's pitched for you guys before two years ago. Uh, in what ways is he a different pitcher now and, and what made you want to go back to him? Yeah, he's been great. He really has. I, you know, I think the, uh, we were, uh, you know, really impressed with his time here and have been really impressed with his, with his career over uh, its entirety and certainly over the last year, year and a half. So I, you know, I think one of the things that's, that's a bit different is his slider usage uh, and the effectiveness of that pitch. Uh, but, uh, you know, him pitching late in games for us and comp- complimenting Yemi and Sember and, and Timmy is, is exciting to think about. Ross, just back to your comments on, on Merrifield and, and, and how it relates to the status of George. Um, how concerned are you guys right now about his, his uh, physical state and, and, and how are you going to manage it going forward? George, I'm talking about. Yeah, not, not overly concerned. We just want to make sure that um, he's not pushing too hard and that he's oh. honest with himself, <laughs> you know, and that, that will be, you know, George is an exceptionally driven individual and a very high pain tolerance. So just making sure that, um, you know, we're not pushing too hard and he's not pushing too hard and we're, we're not overly concerned and very confident that we'll be able to manage it. Thanks, Ross. All right, Rob. All right, we'll check in with Ethan here. Go ahead, Ethan. Hey, Ross, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, with Zach Pop, you know, he has the good sinker. I think there's some decent peripherals on his slider too. You, you know, with him, where do you see room for growth or some untapped potential yeah you know much of it will come from experience and him getting more exposure to the to major league baseball he's already been more than effective at this level um but the you know the consistency around that power sink in the zone is is enough to be very excited about so i i think it will come with being even more consistent with the location of it and the usage against different styles of hitters and different types of hitters um, opportunities with the slider. It's already a very good one. He's very sinker heavy and we don't see lots of things that we see as changes. Um, we see small opportunities that we'll work with him on. Thanks Ross. All right, Ethan. 
All right. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, Ross, and thanks everybody else for for jumping in here before the game got started. So we appreciate you all doing this tonight with us.